Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Nerd Screens Podcast, where we give you information that you probably didn't want and didn't need, but just because we felt like giving it out to you anyway. So one thing I want to start off while talking about today is, okay, so I'm a healer main. I play a lot of uh, JRPGs and um, MMOs in general. And I'm sorry. Hold on. I got distracted. (laughs) My bad. Okay. So I play a lot of JRPGs and MMOs in general. And majority of the time, whenever I'm playing one of those games, I'm usually the healer because a lot of my friends do not understand how to stay away from the pointy end of a stick. So majority of the time, I just got to make sure that they don't doubt it. Nothing stupid. Like, you know, standing in uh, AOEs or... Uh, if you're not familiar with the terms, uh, area of effect attacks, that's when you see a big flashy thing on the ground and then you just stand there and die because healer adjust. But anyway, um, yeah, so in most instances, I'm usually the healer or usually have some type of healing ability. And that's like 50 percent of my main focus. No lie, because half of the time, if I run content with friends, they're usually doing something um crazy, for one, and which is fine, which is fine if you have like a follow through plan. But half the time, I feel like they're just kind of testing their abilities to see what they can tank. And majority of the time, they're not built to tank. So uh, there's that, and there's a lot of death that follows. So I kind of adopted the role eventually after. I don't know, just having a lot of people die around me because, you know, mechanics and not paying attention and stuff like that. So in the current RPG or current MMO RPG that I play, I am currently um, practicing a bunch of the healer roles in there. And let me just say, to be honest, so it's so crazy being a healer in a game and like especially if you're kind of new to the route because sometimes if people so your number one thing that you're supposed to be doing the entire time is just keeping people alive like that's the number one rule of a healer like it doesn't matter how much you keep them alive by i mean it's some of what matters you don't want them to be at like one hp health or whatever and just like oh yeah we barely got through you know you, you may be a little bit safer than that but Majority of the time, you just want to keep people alive, which is crazy whenever you like run. Because in this specific instance, they have dungeons inside uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, correct? So, you know, sometimes you run some dungeons and uh, you get like maybe either a new tank or it's a tank that like thinks the healer should just like do everything, like absolutely everything. Like they don't use any type of damage mitigation because majority of the time, whenever you're a tank, you have some type of abilities that like will buff yourself or like debuff the enemy. That way you don't take a lot of damage. And it's kind of crazy because I'm I'm a little hard set on recognizing when tanks are actually using uh, stuff like that. The only thing I really be worried about when it comes to the tank is really just taking aggro. Like, bro, if I'm the healer, just don't take aggro, please. Like, I, this should not be a reason. Unless I'm healing in, like, the middle of the fight and then, like, there's some enemies in the corner that kind of just see me over there and they're just like, oh, he's healing. Get him. Get him. <laughs> but, no, so that's pretty much all I be worried about most of the time. But sometimes you run into a dungeon. Maybe it's, like, a lower-level dungeon or something like that. And you'll get, <clears throat> so the bad part is, you'll get a tank that starts dying, like, rapidly. Like, as soon as he, because they do this thing called pulling, where they pull all the enemies from, um, well, if they pull wall to wall, this is what this is. They'll pull as many enemies as they can to, like, the door of the first boss, if if that is even, um, if they're even able to do that, or however far we'll let them go. And then usually we'll deal with the outpour of all that as soon as they stop. Now, the bad part is once they get to that stopping point, if they just sit there and fight with the enemies just to keep aggro and use none of their damage mitigation, then it's just a quick and easy to, you just see the health rapidly going down. And it's so crazy playing a healer because you're just sitting there like, oh my God, why are you dying so quick? Like half the time I'm literally yelling out, why are you dying so quick? Why is your health going down? So like, what are you even doing over there, bro? And it, it'll be so crazy because half the time they'll pull, because they'll with me specifically, they'll pull halfway through 
we'll stop for a second. I get like two seconds to breathe in a heal because it takes some time to cast the damn healing spell. We get to moving again. I'm like, bro, your health is not taking it. You're not running because running is also a damage mitigation because if you run and they can't catch up to you, then they can't hit you at the moment. And maybe I can sneak in like, you know, a quick spell or something like that. But no, they be walking. They be walking, bro. Literally walking from point A to point B, and they're dying the entire time. And I'm just like, I hope you know that if you keep walking, it just creates this weird situation where the enemies can catch you, and then you'll move far enough away to where I can't catch you with my spells. So next thing you know, you're just dying. So yeah, there's that, and it's even worse when you get to certain areas like that because then you check inside the chat. <laughs> and this is like the worst feeling bro especially if you're like you're just beginning to heal so you start thinking like everything is your fault as soon as you see like somebody's health drop you're just like oh my god i'm not doing my job which i've gotten over that fact because honestly i'll watch to see what you're doing out there so if you're standing in the big flashing red zone or big flashing orange zone i'm pretty sure that's all on you and uh i don't know what to tell you buddy i just tank adjust but anyway um no, so sometimes they get to the point where they'll be inside the chat and they'll just be like, Healer, what are you doing? And I'm like, Well, apparently I'm about to stop healing you because you don't appreciate it. I literally like, and it's even worse when you get like a DPS, which, okay, so just to give you a bit of insight for anybody who doesn't play MMOs like that, DPS, you have your main damage dealers, you have ranged DPS and you have melee DPS. Range should be the ones that's taking less damage, seeing as though they have to be a little bit further away because they can be further away from the action, but they can still get their damage in. You have healers, which is me. Our usual thing is, depending on which type of healer you're using, because they have barrier healers and they have pure healers. Barrier healers, which is what I'm practicing currently, is when you kind of have the foresight to know when something's going to happen. So you kind of, you know, throw up as many defensive barriers to like kind of help with damage mitigation just a bit. And then you kind of slowly heal your way through that and then everything should be fine. Then you have pure healers who can just spam the hardest heal that you've ever seen in your life and just uh, keep the party at full health after the action. So they're a little more, I don't want to say reactive. And then you have tanks. I don't really know too much about tank separation. I just know from general, tanks are supposed to take a majority of the damage. When it comes to running any of the dungeons, they're supposed to take majority of the damage. Run damage mitigation, that way they don't die when they reach whatever point it is that they need to take the damage. Make sure all bosses are turned the opposite way from the party. And, you know, just generally taking care of the party. So when you get DPS inside the chat, they start talking trash. <laughs> and yes, look, I am a bit salty because it just happened one day. <laughs> and this is after this is because I was like I said, I was practicing on a new healer. But this is after... I've already been with that healer for a minute. So I kind of know what I'm doing. And it's a low level dungeon. So I'm like, okay, yeah, we can, we can run it. We'll be all right. So you get us dying because one, the tank pulled so many enemies and wasn't using any damage mitigation whatsoever. Like he pulled the entire, like, bro, the amount of people that was spammed up on us is crazy. So you got that happening. And it's, at the same time, it's an unnecessary pool because sometimes you have unnecessary pools where it's like you can just kind of walk past these enemies because you don't really need to kill them for anything. Like we can literally walk through and be fine. And it's like a bait. It's really like a whole trap out there. But a lot of people don't read that situation. So they end up pulling them anyway. So you got them pulling an entire room of enemies on us for one. You two, you got the DPS standing inside of the damn AOE zone the entire time. Trying to give out as much damage as they possibly can. But what you don't understand is DPS loss can also come from you dying. So um, there's that. And then after everyone eventually dies, because we're all not doing what we're supposed to do at this point, like at this point, I just didn't stop healing, buddy. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of the problem too, not gonna lie. 
Well, okay, okay. Maybe after he said what he said in the chat, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to stop healing, buddy. Because he was just like, what? Healer, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm about to ignore your health bar now. We're about to just run with, because usually we run with two DPS, a tank, and a healer. And I was just kind of like, yeah, we can just probably run this for those three. And it'll be fine. But long, long story short, yeah, so if you ever play an MMO or just any RPG in general, usually the party size and the party roles is pretty much still the same. You still have a tank, a healer, and a DPS. Whether you have one or two DPS, doesn't really matter. Your job's still the same. You don't really have any damage mitigation. Your abilities do way more damage than most of our abilities, and that's pretty much your job. But um, just in general, know your role. Just kind of know your role. And if you ever play a healer, quick tip, but um, you're basically babysitting basically like the entire time just just look at, at staple the bars to your hand um tattoo the health bars to your arm glue your eyes to that portion of the screen because if you have people that don't know what they're doing which most of your friends probably don't know what they're doing you're gonna be watching that bar the entire time and you're gonna watch it drop and then just panic heal your way through or whatever interaction you're having. That's usually how it goes. I'm not going to lie. It's still fun, though. <laughs> and then uh, for tips on the tanks out there, um, do your best. Not a lot of people just want to tank shit. I ain't going to lie to you. You got this. <laughs> I believe in you, bro. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and another thing I've tried lately is crafter classes. I did not know how fun a crafter class can be. Like, okay, so most MMOs in general, and I think a couple RPGs also, they usually have these classes where, like, they don't do any actual, or it may be just even be, like, some type of mini game type thing going on, too. But they usually have these classes that don't actually do any of the action-y things. They don't ever actually go out and fight or anything like that. They'll either, A, <clears throat> go out there and gather things from, like, you know, the local fauna and, and flora and stuff like that, or, B, they'll actually craft an item out of the stuff that you gather maybe accidentally from a dungeon or from being in that gathering class. And honestly, the entire concept was a little boring to me, but at the same time, okay, so I like do-it-yourself projects. And if you like do-it-yourself projects too, you'll eventually get to trying a crafting class inside the game. Okay, um, so... If you like do-it-yourself projects, you eventually get to the point where you'll try a crafting class inside the game. And let me just tell you, so one of the biggest things inside Final Fantasy XIV, if you ever get to play at this point, just please download the game so I can shut up about it. But anyway, one of the biggest things about Final Fantasy XIV is the glamours. And again, glamours are just like the transmog system, which is... Basically, just you being able to change what your armor looks like to be something more fashionable and functional. So you can have maybe like the highest rated defense armor or anything that helps out your class, but you don't have to have it look like that. It can look like anything else. And that's one of the better parts of the game, too. The glamour things are like that's that's like in-game content right there bro like getting a cool outfit and just showing off in like one of the hub cities is one of like or just running a dungeon and just like you know casually dripping on everybody that comes your way i mean that's that's just the part of the game and crafting classes help out so much with that and at the same time it also creates this feeling whenever you okay so there's a lot of outfits you can make because me for one one of the crafting classes that i play is weaver and weavers are usually known for making like cloth clothing and you know just cloth accessories and stuff like that in general and most of the healer classes if not all of the healer classes wear cloth generally speaking because that's just normally what a mage wears so i can create a bunch of our gear and I think the best portion of that is making an outfit that looks drippy as hell and you literally made it yourself. And it's like, bro, and you can make it 
in terms of like quality and stuff like that, you can up the quality and all like just making that entire outfit that you're wearing yourself and running that through a dungeon. It's like a whole different feeling, bro. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like even the little mission to because just like uh, any other class inside the game, you usually have class missions as well and they unlock different abilities. But even the mission for just the Weaver, and we're just talking about the Weaver, there are several other classes in the game that allows you to craft different ap- items, such as like weapons in general, maybe a weapon for whatever your tank is using or just accessories and all that. But again, I chose Weaver and just the Weaver's quest line in general. It's interesting. It's, it's definitely interesting. It was... If I had to put it in short, it was basically about me trying... Well, I ain't gonna lie. The first portion of the own quest, I kind of was like... I, I skipped through a little bit of it. But I, I caught up at like the 25% mark when I was 25% of the way in. So for the most part, I'm an expert. But it was kind of sort of just this quest line based on this lesser person oh my god I, <laughs> that sounds so bougie lesser person um it was based sort of on this economically challenged person we're, we're gonna put it like that sounds bougie or too that, you know what you know what i mean anyway it was based on this person like that who just didn't know how to dress and then wants to impress this girl she was of the higher class she was like royalty and stuff like that and he just could not get any of his outfits right. He would, well, I would take different um, deliveries throughout the quest line and like deliver stuff to different people. But he was like the main patron. And it was like, whenever he would order anything from us, he'll put the outfit on. And we're just staring at this man like, bro, what did you even, what was, what did you expect the outcome of this to be? And then he just runs off and I'm just like, bro, Oh my God, let us dress you because at this point, no, you're wasting our material and I'd have made you several outfits and none of this stuff looks good. So, but long story short, he ends up finally getting to the point where we give him an outfit that he can, well, we basically suggest an outfit that he can wear that would actually impress the girl that doesn't look stupid and doesn't like something he just pulled out the trash can at the very last minute because he literally made all of our work look like trash, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. <laughs> but, um, he gets to the point where we make him an outfit from our suggestion. He looks really good in it, and he ends up um, saving it. I'm, I'm really spoiling the quest line. I'm even going to lie to you. But uh, he's really, uh, he goes to kind of go impress the girl, and a situation happens, a minor situation. He stands up for her and all that, and then um, he basically gets the girl. At least that's what, that's all the way up until the 50th level of that quest line, because you can't really. Okay, you can't really go past that point until you like uh finish the main story quest. But again, I was doing like side content. But long story short, again, that is just the crafting classes in the game. It's really a fun, really a fun system. It's more fun than I thought it was gonna be. And I really enjoyed myself and I enjoy just making things in general. They even have a little marketplace on there. So like once you make gear, you can list your gear onto the marketplace and hopefully sell it for like a reasonable price that there's an entire ecosystem inside that game it is, it is cool it is definitely cool and i feel like i was missing a huge part of like the mmo life with not wanting to do any other crafting stuff i'm not sure how fun it will be in any other game but i know in final fantasy 14 it's pretty fun i've also watched a video the other day on somebody doing one of the fishing classes inside the game. Cause it's also fishing. It's always fishing, but I watched somebody do that as well. And it was fishing. Fishing is always fun in the games. I've never played a game that offered fishing that I didn't like it in. And that's so surprising. Cause I'd never went fishing. Well, I went fishing one time in real life and I have caught a turtle. And after that I was over it. Cause I was like, how out of every fish in this damn lake, did I catch a turtle? And I was just like, that's my luck. And I was very upset <laughs> by catching that damn turtle. So yeah, I kind of weighed myself off of that. But uh, fishing in games is pretty fun as well. So choosing bait, just getting a uh, rare fish and just kind of showing off your catch. So if anything, I think the most of the point is just give it a shot when it comes to a lot of these side classes, when it comes to MMOs. Even with the gathering class, I had fun out there too. 
The only bad part is with gathering, it's a lot more dangerous because you're going out there. First of all, you start off low level. You have to go to like these uh, tree areas or like any area that has like vegetation or something like that. That way you can actually collect things to be able to craft later or to sell on the marketplace. Now, the thing is, some of the rarer materials, you either have to, well, you'll basically have to sneak past like higher level monsters and just hope that you don't die out there because you had to, you happen to have an axe in your hand. And I'm not talking an axe that you can actually battle with. I'm talking like I'm cutting down a tree axe and basic armor. And then you got this giant toad looking at you like, bro, you're really in my area and you're about to get eaten. So there's that. But other than that, it's really not bad either. I didn't enjoy it as much as the crafting class, but eh, I'm not much of a gatherer for the most part. So, eh, but anyway, yeah, so just give it a shot when it comes when it comes to the MMO life. And it comes to all the side challenges and side content, I would say try it out. Even if it doesn't sound like it's too good at the moment or like something you're like typically interested in, they definitely add it to the game for a reason. And I would definitely give it a shot. There's even this other thing inside the game. It's uh it's like a casino. And oh dear God, bro. When games have casinos, I don't I I really don't so this is where my gambling problem starts. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, this is literally where my gambling problem starts, because when it comes to games having casinos, one instance, I've played Dragon Quest Eight. Now, Dragon Quest Eight has like this little mini casino area and like it's like maybe the fourth or fifth town that you go into. It's like this little it's supposed to be set up as like this little ghetto area where everyone's kind of in poverty. And at the same time, there's scamming out there and slick. I'm not going to lie. It looks like it looks like the little casino machines are a bit of a bit scammy, but. Still, slot machines in games is like one of the most addicting things I've ever played in life. And I've literally played slots after I played um, slots in game. I played it IRL and it is as addicting as the IRL slots. I don't know what it is about slot machines, but it just it always feels like you're so close. Even when I play Dragon Quest 11, because they'll actually have prizes and all that for you to win. And there'll be an um, unbelievable amount of like the tokens that you have to win. So you're sitting there trying to basically when it comes to gambling, or at least when it comes to gambling inside the game, in my mind, I'm just trying to look for the most efficient route to get to that amount of gold. It's like in order to do that, you're either going to a spin a little and just keep hoping for the best, which honestly is going to take you a tremendous amount of time and honestly not going to get you to your goal or B, you're going to risk it all on some very risky uh, bets and then uh, hope for the best. And that's usually what I do. So I'll start out small, right? I'll start out very small. I'll start out uh, the one token slot machines and just get it up to like 10 tokens or something like that. And then I win me a good little lump sum out of that. And then boom, next thing you know, I'm moving up to like the uh, maybe the tens or something like that. It's so like doing 100 tokens. And then after that, you know, when they ask for the hundreds, uh, I'm doing more than that. So I don't know. It's it's just fun. It's really just fun. I don't know what it is about slot machines and why gambling is gambling is bad. OK, that's that's all I want to say. Gambling is bad. But in game, it is so fun. And um, no lie to um, I often lose. So I'll spend like <laughs> I'll spend a really good portion of time inside the um inside the area with the gambling or the slot machines and all that. And it will get to the point where I end up literally spending all of the gold that I'd have made up into that part of the game. And next thing you know, I'm just broke as shit in like two seconds, bro. So it's it's fun. And it definitely taught me about IRL gambling just a bit because it literally feels the exact same way. So if you want to ever do, I don't condone gambling, but if you ever want to like kind of test the waters to see what it was like without actually losing anything in real life. I would honestly recommend either playing Dragon Quest uh, 11 or Dragon Quest um, 8. 
and just kind of seeing how it feels in there because boy, it is literally the same feeling and you're going to lose all your stuff and it's probably going to drive you away from trying it in real life. If you don't have luck in there. Now, if you do get lucky pulls, um, be careful because that's how they get you. <laughs> that's how I lost all of my gold every single time. But yeah, um, this was another quick episode from Nerd Screens podcast. Uh, I like to do some quick ones from time to time again. 25 or 30 minutes is about quick. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, um, share it, and that's pretty much it. And uh, hopefully, I didn't forget my intro. I mean, outro. God damn it. <laughs> um, damn. Did I forget my outro for real? I really think I forgot my outro. Nah, I'm just kidding. Can't believe I said that on fire.